We have one more uh, presenter that we're going to bring up, and um, this is Alan Smith, and he's one of our trainers here at GitHub. He's going to um, walk us through some live demoing. So if you want to take notes, bring out your computers, feel free to do so now. Um, some fun facts about Alan, if you want to go ahead and join me on stage. Um, Alan lived in Nashville for a while, also very musical um, as part of my speaker montage up here. Um, he lives currently in North Carolina, and uh, he, in his former life, used to be a cameraman for professional wrestling. So if you want to ask him about that, you should do that. So without further ado, this is Alan Smith. All right, let me get uh, logged in here. All right, so I wanted to take a little bit of time here just at the end um, to kind of walk through a typical workflow that you might use uh, if you wanted to get LFS in, uh, in a repository on GitHub and what that process looks like from the command line. And a lot of it actually mirrors what Saeed just did here for us. Um, but instead of uh, pushing to somewhere like VSO, we would be pushing to GitHub in this case. But I also want to stop at every point along the way and kind of dive down in to see what Git, Git LFS is actually doing to your repository so we can see how, uh, how the mechanics of this extension actually work. So I'll open up my text editor here. Can everybody see that? It looks a little small on my screen. So let me try switching my theme up and see if that helps a little bit at least. Um, so the first thing I want to point out is that when you install git lfs, it updates your global git config file. So that's the git config, the dot git config file that lives in your home directory. So So you'll notice that it puts this filter in your .git config file. So you have your clean and your smudge filters that run. And we'll talk about those filters here just uh, in just a little bit here. But I wanted to point out that this is something that changes in your git config when you uh, install git LFS. So the first thing I like to do when I have a repository, so I just have a repository here called large assets. I've already cloned it down to my machine, but it also exists on uh, github.com. And if you'll notice, I have uh, a few images here. So these are all PNG images. I've already installed git LFS on this machine. So what I can do in a repository, if I want to initialize it for that repository, I could type git LFS in it. Or I could actually just start by typing git LFS track. And then I can specify anything that I would necessarily want Git LFS to manage. So that could be individual files. That could be file pads. Uh, any type of glob you could specify on the command line. So if you want to search, I'm sorry, if you want to manage entire directories, you could do that. Or if you want to manage certain file extensions within directories, you could specify that here as well. So I'm just going to be kind of global here, and I'm just going to say track star dot png. And so then we get this uh, nice message from git LFS here that we are tracking star.png files. But if we go over to our repository here, or I'm sorry, to our, I guess we are technically in our repository, I want to point out some things that have changed. So when we ran git LFS track, a couple of new things were added to the .git folder that's in your repository. So the first thing I want to point out is that you have under your .git folder, you now have this LFS folder that is underneath that .git folder. And this is where all of your local storage happens. So when you uh, pull assets down from the uh, LFS server, they're actually stored locally here for you outside of the objects folder where objects in your repository typically reside. So you have two different places that are now stored in this .git folder. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out. The other thing here is that when you initialize git LFS in your repository, you'll notice that you have a pre-push hook 
uh, Git hook that's actually installed for you. And so this is a uh, kind of a pre-check that runs any time before you push assets up to uh, GitHub. And then last thing, the thing that I want to point out here is that you have this git attributes file. So this is one of the things that I really, really love about git LFS is that it's just built on top of the functionality that you already have in git. So we use this git attributes file to specify that for all these PNG files that we want to track, we're going to run that LFS filter. So I said we talked about that filter here, and so let's talk about git filters. So if you don't know if you haven't used, haven't used git filters a whole lot, the basic concept is that you have two commands you can specify. You have a clean command and you have a smudge command, and depending on which way the files are moving in your repository, one runs or the other runs. So the clean command runs any time you check files in, or you may know this is maybe adding it to your index or your staging area. So anytime you stage a file, we can say that these PNG files are going to run through a clean filter that we've specified. Uh, the smudge filter works on the opposite end, so anytime you check your files out, they run through that smudge filter before they land in your working directory. So, oops. if you'll notice here, again, back to that git config file, our clean and smudge filters are actually uh, very similarly named. We have git LFS clean and git LFS smudge. So if you'll notice, I don't have anything in this LFS folder yet. So now that I have my, my PNG files, if I am tracking them, and I can verify this with git LFS track, and it'll list the paths that we're tracking here. And right now it's just .png. So if I add all of these PNG files, Now that we've staged these files, git LFS has created those pointers, those text pointers, and stored those as objects here in the actual git repository, but then it took the content of those assets, and now they're in the local storage here. And so the great thing about being built on top of git like this is it just fits right into the workflow that we already use. So now that everything is added, We can commit like we normally would. Oops. Let me double check that. Sorry about that. There it goes. So when we push our files, Git LFS actually intercepts them and sends the actual content of the files to the LFS server, which is, uh, in this case, it's an endpoint that's listening on github.com. And once it's done that, it takes those text pointers and it actually pushes the repository up to GitHub like you normally would during a regular Git push. But the great thing about it is if we view these assets on GitHub, they're rendered out. Um, and, and Rick demonstrated this earlier, but we don't see those text pointers on GitHub. We actually see the content of the files that we want to see, which I, I think is really nice. Uh, and if you're using uh, the GitHub flow, for instance, if you're doing a pull request right now, you can use all of the rich diff tools that you have for images and things like that. So rendering these images out, even though what's stored in your repository is that pointer file. So I don't want to um, uh, repeat a lot of what uh, anybody else has said, but I do wanted to kind of mention some of these new features uh, in the latest release. So git LFS fetch, and I'll pull this up here. So git LFS fetch lets you download assets from the git, um, the git LFS server to your local storage so that you can switch branches more easily. 
Uh, but what I love is that you have a lot of different flags where you can specify maybe certain files to include or certain files to exclude. So for instance, if you work on a project with uh, a lot of different team members and maybe your subspecialty just deals with audio, right? You could specify that you want to just fetch those audio files. So you could, uh, you could include certain paths, you could exclude certain paths if you don't want certain files. So I love this new feature because it lets you uh, do things when you have time and then when you're actually working you can switch between your branches much more quickly because you already have that data locally and you don't have to worry about pulling it when you're ready to work. And uh, one more thing to point out here, so there is, uh, we also have a command which is git lfs pull, and what that does is it's a combination, right? So it, it fetches from the git lfs server, but then it checks those files out to your working directory as well. So there's kind of a mirror between the language that you would typically use in a git workflow and a git lfs workflow. So they kind of pair well together, uh, at least I think so. So uh, one thing I wanted to point out before, before I finish it up here, I know everybody's probably ready for lunch here, but uh, one question that I think a lot of people often ask is, okay, well I have this project that I have been managing through Git and there are large assets in this project already, but now I want to convert it to LFS, right? So there are a couple of options uh, for what you can do, but uh, something, and I have to thank Rick for this because he, he pointed this out to me, but uh, for anybody who has ever used the BFG repo cleaner, uh, you have this option now in the latest release, I believe, where you can actually convert your blobs to uh, LFS objects. So you can run across your entire repository and you can take those large assets, whatever you specify, and it'll convert those from objects in your Git repository to local storage objects that live in that LFS folder. And uh, in just some of the, the tests, I guess, that I, I saw run, uh, maybe a Git repository went from close to 700 megs down to about 32. So um, there is some uh, definite room for shrinking the size of your repository so it doesn't take as long to clone and people can work with it a little bit more easily there. So um, I will be around if anybody has questions. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to talk with people one-on-one -on -one, uh, if you wanted to kind of go through a more uh, complex workflow. Also, I wanted to point out that uh, our services team is over here available if you wanted to make an appointment to talk about anything services related, GitHub related. Uh, we'll be over here for the next two days, so please feel free to stop by and see us. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for coming out.